Now you've lost to an expansion team at home during Bill the Fam. You're now sitting on the outside looking in from the playoffs. Still a while to rectify that, but uh, I mean, my confidence is is low. Welcome to the Vamos Morales podcast on the State of Louisville Podcast Network. I am Zach, as usual, here with Benton, as usual. Benton, yeah. how you doing this week? I'm doing all right. I'm looking at my background, and I know it's been messy for the past... I, let me redact that for most of the shows. I'm like, I should probably clean that up. <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Please. Yet another reason to watch the YouTube feed of the show, where you can where you can see how messy Benton's office is behind him. I just get I get projects going, I pull stuff out, and then they just don't find their way back home. These boxes in my defense belong in a closet there, but I had to move it for a ladder. Yeah, it up in the attic. If it were me, I'd just close that door that you can't see the boxes. Well, that's going out the hallway, and then that requires moving the stuff out of the way of that door. I always keep it open. That's a good point. We're off topic already. I just sit anyway, in front of the I'm wall, feel- and then you have no clue how clean or messy my office is. I'm uh, I'm doing well because the more fun of the two matches were later. So I have that taste still left in my Yeah, mouth. we left on a high note for the weekend. But we'll... That's good. We'll have to talk about the the one. And I don't have good things to say. Before we do that, though, we got to do the what are you into this week? So, Zach, what are you into? Uh, So the... I think... I think this was a what I was into when the first season came out. But uh, the new season of My Adventures with Superman... It is currently coming out. It's like an episode a week. So uh, there, there are a couple in right now. And I finally, I have been catching up on the new season with our daughter. And I really, I really love that show. It's just a very fun Superman show. It's got good vibes. It's like a nice, happy, uh, good. It's a, yeah, it's a good Superman show. What uh, refresh my mind is this kind of like a golden era sort of superhero cartoon. No, this is uh uh what if superman were my anime boyfriend that's it's a very I'm more very she's now <laughs> uh it's it's like a light-hearted uh very light-hearted superman show with like a lot of anime influences okay so it's a lot of him and lois and jimmy getting into hijinks um the i think I think it's the same animation studio that did uh, Legend of Korra. If you've seen Avatar, I, I think it's the I've not seen similar art, it. art style to that. I think it's the same studio, but uh, it is really fun and uh, it's like not super gritty and and dark. It's very very light. It's a good show to watch with our daughter. Yeah, Chuck, she enjoys it. Uh, very funny thing though, uh, Jack Quaid. It's the voice of Superman in it, who is uh like I, mean, look I, like I don't know if you call him the main character, but like the protagonist on the boys. And I just think it's very funny that he is in both like the grittiest, most adult superhero show and also the most lighthearted superhero show at the same time. Good old Huey. But yeah, it's on uh it's on Max. If you haven't checked it out. I think okay. it actually was, airs on Max question. I think it airs on Cartoon Network, but we uh, we watch it on Max. So uh but yeah, what about who about you, Ben? What are you into this week? I um I got two things. So one, the Tour de France has started, and if like I, you know, doing like a lot of my races I've done, considering I guess I'll consider myself a former endurance athlete. Um, I have a greater appreciation for that stuff and watching like the cycling stuff is surprisingly like more entertaining than you would think. Not like a big, like cycling guy, but I decided that this tour, I'm like, I'm going to watch as much of it as I, as I can. I've caught parts of it and stuff before, but it's kind of like, it's kind of got that baseball sort of vibes where you can kind of throw in the background and, and do other things and, and still appreciate yeah. what's going on. So check it was like F F ones, maybe a little bit more like in your face, pay attention, which tuned into that today. That's, I forgot how much fun that is. I haven't gotten to watch any of that in a while. So that's one thing that I'm into, but the bigger thing that I'm into, and I think I texted you right after I watched this, um, 
You got I, a good one this week. I, I've dude, I've been in a tear with movies lately. Like I've been finding some like primo ones. And frankly, most of them are either ones I, I should have watched or should have rewatched sooner. We already talked about Starship Troopers, obsessed with it. I've watched this one since the one I want to talk about, but um Naked Gun is it's um yeah. that is pretty timeless like I, I i can't remember if i actually seen or just caught parts of it and stuff before but i actually properly watched it i'm like god damn this is so good this is so funny um you know, it's just such a unique type of uh humor there but the thing that i'm into this week is john claude van damme's blood sport kumate kumate let me tell you i refuse to call it a movie because it is cinema <laughs> Well, I mean, it's based on your story. It's not a movie. It's more of a documentary about uh, about about uh, a man learning kung fu magic. It is. I I can't emphasize how good it is. It's like it's one of those movies, kind of like Starship Trooper, where like every like every scene, everything that happened, like I had comments for like it was just, it was just absolutely amazing. It was just so much fun. Yeah. Was it an objectively it good movie? 10. Absolutely not. Yeah, stays at 10 the whole time. It never, oh my God. never drops from a 10 as far as intensity goes. It's so good. Like, I understand why everybody knows John Claude's name, even if you've never seen one of his movies. It is so much fun. But how I describe it, and I think it's slurs because it hit me about midway through the movie. I'm like, you know what this is? All this is is a live action version of the World Martial Arts Tournament in Dragon Ball. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Like, it's just... It's just so ridiculous. It's this like secret underground like martial arts tournament pitting the best. Everybody's like very like cliched. Like if they have a fighting style, they are definitely like from that country and wearing all the traditional garb. Like they have to make it very blatantly obvious. When they're not fighting, they all have to sit next to each other, which is hilarious. <laughs> so they all want to like, kill each other. It is just, it is a sight to behold. I, I'm, I don't know if I'm upset that I've never seen it or or thrilled that i've just kind of found this part of my life where i know yeah, i just really appreciate it you only get to experience it for the first time once so oh my god you it was you got that it was so good it was so good i had so much fun watching it now i need to watch his other movies i don't know if they'll time cop's they'll... good if you haven't seen time cop watch time cop i'm talking about john claude movies yeah not the oh is he in that i thought that, uh, i thought you meant the director did that so we talked about him before that was offline we were texting oh oh no not the director he didn't direct he can't he the 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 guy who wrote the book i think i think that the the what the true story air quotes is based on uh he's insane he's a legitimate crazy person <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it's like uh we don't really have him anymore but he was like a like a karate con artist which mm. which we had a lot of in the early late 80s early 90s it's sort of a a job that no longer exists but yeah like it went the way of the milkman huh <laughs> anyway if you've not seen blood sport and you want to watch a movie that like isn't inherently good but you will have an absolute blast watching i mean it it does not get more 80s than that like Every single like 80s trope is in there. Like it's the culmination of the 80s. Like through the 80s, they're developing these aesthetics that we would come to know to be the 80s. And it all came together in this perfection that is blood sport. It's time Jean-Claude Cop. Van that, That's your next assignment. You oh, have I've, to watch Time Cop. You said Time Cop and I'm thinking RoboCop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's where the disconnect was. I just, I'm just an idiot. But <laughs> anyway. RoboCop is the <laughs> Is the director from Starship Troopers. So that that's, is that's, that's okay, the that's, connection you were that's, drawing. Okay, yeah. But there are lots of blank cop movies from the late 80s. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like Bloodsport is the pinnacle of what the 80s is. And it's a lot of fun. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but the remake, I've not seen the original and I kind of want to now, but the remake of Roadhouse is actually a lot of fun. That's on uh, on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it looks. Did fun. I did I talk about that one? I might have been one of my things before. That I one's fun you too. It when you watched it, yeah. Okay, that's that's fun. It's like you go in. It's like I know this isn't going to be a good movie, but I'm here for a good time. And um, what's his face? Wow, why did I blank on his name? Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes, thank you, Jake Gyllenhaal. He's fantastic. I love him. He's a great yeah, guy. He's good. And Conor McGregor, he's just. <laughs> 
seen. Have you seen original Roadhouse? No, I want to now though okay. because the 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 new remake was a lot. I had a lot of fun with the remake. Yeah, yeah. Original Roadhouse enjoyable. is also completely insane in in similar ways. Uh, oh, I'm de- uh, I'm definitely watching it then. Yeah, so I need some uh, more it, unhinged stuff. It it gets so violent so fast, so much more than the vibes of the the rest of the movie would have you believe. Also, uh, uh, Sam Elliott. Who is the narrator? Oh, the cowboy guy, yeah. In, in the dude, it's like a young, very hot Sam Elliott. It is it is worth seeing? I you would not expect Sam Elliott to be like as as much of an insane. Anyway, oh, uh, you get a you get a young Forrest Whitaker in Bloodsport. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, oh, I just like the, oh the you, you mentioned the violence thing. Like so, the the movie is called Bloodsport. It's about this like tur like tournament with like no rules but the violence is like like if it's like were they even trying to make it like look realistic in terms of the violence like when they're like bleeding (laughs) it's like very clearly like fake blood and so like i don't know i guess that's just how much things have shifted on what they're willing to to show on tv so like you know a movie called blood sport and it really like in by today's standard is very like just tame (laughs) <laughs> All right. I could I could keep going on for a long time about blood sport. But uh we probably should talk about soccer. Got to stop that little blood blood sport counter going every time I say it. Ding ding ding. We got to stop that. Um let's talk some soccer. I don't want to talk about the racing Louisville match, but I'm willing to Man, do it for you. We had a lot of we had a lot of optimism. And well, we had a lot of optimism. I don't think it was misplaced. I don't was, think we were it wrong. It was found. It was it, the optimism turned out to be warranted for one of the teams this week. Yeah, I mean, like we know who this Little City team is, and they showed us. We'll get into that one though. But the racing one, I don't think we were. We were being. I don't unrealistic. think we know who this team is yet. Still, I don't think we want to admit think- who this team is. Hey, we've gone through this cycle a couple times, which is like, we really want them to get over the hump very badly. And so anytime we see like a glimmer of like, oh, they finally figured it out. We really want to latch on to it and be like, this is it. This is the team. And, uh, and they're still, they're just, they're just permanently on, on the other side of the hump. <laughs> like they just, uh, just very roll the stone up the hill and then back down again. Every time it it seems like like oh they've they've figured out how to win games, they figured out how to close it out, they figured out how to keep the intensity on. They just like lay an egg like this one where it, uh they, I'd they feel can't better. afford that from in multiple dimensions. Yeah, I, I'd feel better one if it were a better team that they had done it against, but like two. It'd be one thing if it was one of those games where they had a bunch of chances and just none of them went in. And you could be like, yeah, I feel like they just got unlucky. They just like, they didn't really have that much going on. They only had eight shots total for the whole game. Uh, I I mean, I think they have been on the unlucky side of VAR two weeks in a row. But it's like, okay, without, without the VAR thing, this had been a 0-0 draw. And also... <laughs> They they would have lucked out in the 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 penalty getting missed in real time, <laughs> anyway. Like I'm mad because like I can blame it on the VAR because the the ref didn't call it when it happened, but it was a foul when it happened. Yeah, I mean I, yeah I don't put that much stock in the like in the the penalty at all. Like it was well, back a foul to hating and... VAR again on this podcast though. VAR sucks. No more VAR. <laughs> <laughs> only when it's in our favor you gotta call it real time that's the way that's the way soccer is meant to be played yeah false at all um you know like again like i don't care that much about much to the point that that you made is that we're still talking about nil nil draw in my mind this was a must win match like that i mean they a they need points and b you know this is supposed to be a bigger match for them it was technically Phil the fam, which I guess we can go ahead and sidebar and, and talk about that element of things because the fam was not quite filled, unfortunately. And, you know, getting results like this are part of the reason, like 
why it's so important so that next time they can maybe get closer to filling the fan because slightly over 8,000 is a bad loose, loose city number. Right. And that's, that's what they hit, like barely scraped over 8,000. And, and that sucks. I want more for them, but people also, are. A... Does it feel like, so like we follow the team very closely. I, I think you would say we host a podcast. We're pretty, we're pretty into it. This might say more about me than the promotion. I did not realize it was a field of fame game until last week. I don't know. I don't know if it was like a late call. I feel like this one did not get pushed as much as the ones I've, I remember in the past. Like I, I, uh, it was pretty late into it before I realized that it was even going to be a field of fame game this weekend. All right. Well, I mean, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. It, it's I mean, like I, I I went off social media, so I I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Like I feel like that's probably where I would have saw a lot of it. But yeah, I mean the point of the matter, if Phil the fam or not, like they are not regularly drawing good crowds, and there's a little part of me that's concerned about their their long term future. And we can we can get it another time. But but the bigger point I want to try to draw there is is that what okay. they need. I want to jump in here because uh, I got. Attendance is up 25% this year. So I think that is moving in the right direction. I, I think th if we want it to be up more than 25%, that's where the wins help. Um, but talking in terms of percentages is like, like, you know, it's, it's that lying with statistics sort of thing. I'm, I'm glad it's percentage. Well, it's up. Like, you want to see growth and 25%. Like you do 25% every year that, that gets you way up, up real high, real fast. Uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to jump in there because uh, I don't want to dog on the team too much. I think as far as like marketing the games and tickets and because I, I threw a jab at the fill the fam thing. So I want to, I want to go in there correct. I think overall the season, this season, they've done a, a really good job of getting attendance up having, and it would really, it would really help like the ticketing staff out if if the product on the field could, could contribute to, to that. But that was, I, I think everything other than when they've done good this season to get it to the top. That was more so the point I, I wanted to draw to, right? Like I know there's this tier of clubs in the NWSL and you, you see their, their stadium on the broadcast and it's just not a good look. I don't want to I stay out of that in tier. that tier, you yeah. know, and now, they, 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 people are attracted to winners. They, they have to start, winning like they have to start getting results at least get some like positive like momentum like reason for people to get excited you know like i'm the the match before ended in a draw like that if for, for people paying attention that was one to get excited about because of the grit that they showed and they just it's just way too much start and stop now you've lost to an expansion team at home during bill the fam you're now sitting on the outside looking in from the playoffs. Still wild to rectify that. But uh, I mean, my confidence is is low. Like I know the talent is there on this team. They just can't execute enough to put themselves in, in the position that I think that they probably rightfully belong in. And I'm I'm gonna downgrade myself to to a little like on doubtful for them in their playoff hopes. And no, not I just because they fell out of that picture right now, but just because of like like, I almost feel like I'm lying to myself at at, at times, like saying how I know this team's good when they can't get results. Like, I don't know, maybe maybe a little bit reactionary, maybe I'll maybe I'll cool down after a match or two or, or or a little bit more time. But like, I'm just pretty like that was an opportunity. They they whiffed it, you know. Oh, we we didn't even mention it was on uh, ESPN too, so. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little, little down on this team. They were there. I wanted them to make the, the playoffs, like, you know, kind of comfortable ish, you know, not like flirting with the line, but right now I feel like we're heading towards flirting with the line trajectory. I don't know. I'm yeah. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, let's do, let's review this. So if you've had season tickets to racing, um, for the entire existence of the team, so 2021, you got if you had season tickets, you got to see four wins for the whole for the whole season. Yep. 2022, you got to see three wins. Uh 
23, you got to see five wins. So it's just like, it's, it's hard to get. And, and so far this year, you have seen two wins. So it's hard to get that number up above 10,000. If you're going to, if you're going to go to 16 games and see like five or fewer wins, like it's just, and, it becomes a slog for people. And not to pit the teams against each other, but to make their situation harder for racing is that you got a, you got a men's side that is absolutely unreal. You know, you want to see like 20 goals in a game, you know, Louisville city game might deliver that one for you. <laughs> And and it's tough. There's pro there's people out there that probably only have enough soccer appetite to maybe regularly follow or go to one of the team's games. Yeah. And well, I, it's I, like if, if you have season if you have city season tickets, you've already seen seven wins. Yeah, uh, you've, you've seen you've just seen, like you've, the, seen, you've seen a lot. You've seen a very special team. Ah. Uh, so and I, I want more for this racing team. So don't get me wrong. Like I, it's not like I don't like them. I just I you know I just these these concerns are very much on the on the forefront of my mind because yeah, again, like Bay is a team that you should be beating, period. Hard stop. That's it. We should we should we should be beating them. And again, like we said earlier, penalty aside, they did not do enough to do that. No, I thought I, the the first half was good, and if they could have continued that up, I could have seen a scenario where they where they did get a win. I would have liked a goal in that first like half. The, but they're creating, they're putting themselves in, they're controlling the game, putting themselves in good positions. They just weren't registering a ton of uh, a ton of good shots, but they were doing a lot of right things in other aspects. Which, if they keep, and I was thinking to myself during that game, if they keep doing this. They're gonna they're gonna find one. Like it's it's gonna become more of a matter of time. But that second half. Bay adjusted, and we use the term tail two halves a lot. This was absolutely one of those. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the good news is, uh, I mean, so they've got um, on, on the 7th, they've got the game against North Carolina coming up. Mm -hmm. And then it's the Olympic break. So, I mean... You almost feel like it's a good time to to take it take time off uh and use that time to maybe recalibrate and figure some things out. I mean uh yeah, I mean, it's definitely not breaking up any momentum they had to take a break then. Yeah, so Yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. Maybe um maybe it'd be a little blessing for them. You know, you step um, away from it, you Well, and I we're still waiting on a couple rosters, but I mean I think uh, a big chunk of the team's going to be around for that break. Uh, yeah. um, I think I they're still waiting on they the the team mentioned that they they were going to put the list out. Yeah, I think next week when the when the when a couple of the teams finalize their their rosters, but like Team USA posted theirs, and uh, I didn't see the alternates yet, but we don't have anybody on on Team USA currently. Um, so, uh, and they've got, um, we'll have two, two tournaments to play in during that break. So they've got the, that, I forget what the league is calling it, but that, that challenge thing against, uh, the uh, Mexican clubs, the Mexican clubs, uh, going on. And then they'll have the women's cup. So it's an opportunity to, to maybe reevaluate some things, get some, games in um work on some stuff it's just like i still think that this team has the the talent like especially oh, i agree comparing them to like the talent there uh, the, the bay, the like player for bla player for bla player they have a better roster than bay has i, I, I think they have a legitimately good roster this year they just got to figure it out yeah um I mean, yeah, I, I think that the talent is there. We we should be making kind of the lower like rungs of of the playoff picture, but I'm just, I I'm just not not feeling it right now. They just, I would I, just I, like I, a run. That, like, that's what they need. They need just that's, like a couple wins in a row. 
not just which a is result, the thing we've never positive had like, outcomes to to really string together and, and get momentum They're, like there's just so much like even if that. they don't finish there it'd be nice to like have a couple good games and get up high in the table even if they drop yeah and i don't even think they need more training time it's just it comes down to a matter of like execution right like these gals have been playing soccer all their lives. You know, a couple more training sessions suiting at the net isn't going to make them a better goal scorer than the next one. Like, I'm not saying they shouldn't practice, but like, that is not their problem to solve right now. And it's execution. I think it comes down to the, at the individual player level, because think about a goal scoring sequence for the most part, you're stringing together a lot of like unique, we'll, we'll just call them task or actions, you know? Pass to player A, pass to player B, you know, get around defender. And at some point, oftentimes there, they'll do, they'll get, they'll check several of those boxes and then, oh, you know, it's a, it's a miss there. Turnover, yeah. sequence over. And that's like, that's kind of like a lot of what we were seeing, particularly in, in the first half. They were doing good. They were, you know, checking several boxes, getting down the final third, just really like, really taking the game to bay. They were in the driver's seat, like that whole half. And then so something would happen and they would not actually find a shot or a good shot. Yeah. To make an excuse, since we've been pretty harsh on this Bay game, roster-wise, they, they had taken a pretty big hit in this game with the combination of injuries and red card suspensions. I mean, they were down... We're talking. Uh, we're, I mean, we're talking two players. You, you, like, you have to have no. That so is like, definitely part of the equation. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, having this, uh, these two players. Well, they were down two center difference. backs. <laughs> Ellie Jean wasn't the problem. Yeah, she did fine. I think she did well. Um, she had a nervy moment I, early I on, mean, but other than that, she did great. I mean, it's the middle of the season, so this this happens. But like Ari has been out. Um. Uh. But this happens to all teams. We can't use missing a few players as yeah. an excuse. I mean, it has oh, no. to be the complete body of work there. We got the complaints in, and now I'm just saying. I'm still mad. Sorry. <laughs> as, <laughs> as a thing, it's like, what will change after this break? If they're healthier after the break, they've, they've got it better. They can get their preferred starting lineup yeah. back in. I, I mean, missing Flint, missing um, Aaron Wright for the game um ari has been out ellie is out for the season so that she's not coming back but uh i just maybe they get a little healthier they get that's a little boost coming back from that yeah i know well break. and again that game was pretty pretty thin margins there you know you could play that what if game what if uh you know taylor yeah. was available there was that like was that it was that enough elevation of talent where it would have been a difference maker who knows but the fact that matters we, we didn't well, have her so it wasn't a lot of roster changes, but we we mentioned early in the season um, how excited we were for set pieces because of all of the height they had, and basic basically like three quarters of the the height that we were excited about at the start of the season was not on the field for that game. Uh, so, you know, just yeah. stuff like that. It's 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 little things on the margins. Yeah, we'll see. But that one just. That that one stung. I walked in there like, all right, this has to be a win. I like, went, I went to art school, so you gotta the critique. You gotta sandwich in. You say the not, perfunctory nice thing, and then you hit them with the mean thing, and then you finish on a nice thing. Yeah, but I'm not talking to them. I'm just I'm just sharing my feelings. That's what we do on here. We That's a good point. The they don't listen. They'll never know. I just. I just talk and I'm probably not saying anything that's even people kind of close to it might think there. I'm sure there's frustrations with, with the team as well. I'm sure they knew. I, I bet was, they're madder than us. So oh, I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't doubt it. And again, I, I like everybody involved there. Like I it's, but I'm just, I'm just frustrated. It has not happened. Has we not like it is why we want them to succeed. Yeah. I don't have anything more to say on that one. I'm ready just, to move on to city. Yeah, I'm ready for them to move on their uh, their next game. North Carolina might be a bit of a, a challenge, but who that's knows? a you know, challenge. Maybe, yeah, maybe Definitely. they uh, maybe they pull something out there and then we can get excited. Maybe they again, rise but... to the occasion. I, right, right. I now, would I'm... say a win against North Carolina more than <laughs> yeah, I'm more not, than yeah. makes up for this loss if that happens. Yeah, please just although with Carolina, the way they so played can... this week, they're not going to beat North Carolina, so they got to step up. If, yeah, if that's going right. to happen. All right, let's uh. 
let's talk about the more fun one. Yes. That was uh I had a I had an absolute blast watching that one. That was a Excuse very me. fun match. You know, the first half, we didn't have any goals, but it was very like it was fairly even. It was it was just it was a fun watch. It was like good for the neutrals. I really like enjoyed you know what what we saw out of the action there. People like, like to see a lot of goals get scored. But yeah, we got the yeah, we got this like, first half was very kind of even fair, good like it was just it was just good soccer all around. Both coaches, like there were a lot of things they could be happy about. I mean, things they're definitely gonna criticize their teams about too. But uh yeah, that damn it didn't just blow open, it just got absolutely obliterated in that second half. And we finally got the big road win. We've it's been pretty insane to to finish a game with four goals and not scoring in the first half. It's I, yeah, very I, weird. I uh, I, I would I would guess I've not done any digging on that, but that does not happen often. Yeah, it was um, it really escalated, and part of this is like we are, I mean, really, we could extend this to the entirety of Coach Cruz's tenure at the helm, but we're we're a second half team because him and his squad they do a very good job of adjusting at halftime and i think that's like a lot of what we were seeing there just these small little little tweaks that little bit of feedback lighten that fire in in the in the locker room and i mean look at the the results that you you get from that it was that was about as good of a performance as i could have asked for in terms of rebounding from that Rhode Island loss you know, the one they we did concede the one that was just a, a little mistake, but at the end of the day, it doesn't like you score it, four. I'm not going to feel it, too yeah. bad about one. It, it, it happens, but uh, I, other than that blemish, like I, I really could not have asked for, for more. You know, you got multiple goal scorers in the mix, they were playing very well. It was just, it was great, except for obviously, uh, I mean, Jorge's Jorge. injury was, uh, one was, out. was definitely one Jorge. that we that was did brutal. not want to see. That was. I, I'm surprised how quickly the goalkeeper got because it looked like he ate like a a hard knee, like right to the like to the to the gut from Jorge. I mean like a straight back. knee though, which is why it was so much worse for Jorge. And yeah, probably but before why before I saw the, the replays and I just saw it in real time, I'm like, oh, that keeper is messed up. I was less concerned for Jorge because I didn't think he I didn't think he got the worst of that, but then you see the replay and see what happened to his leg. I'm like, oh, I didn't I think that might be the worst Louisville City injury we've seen in a game. It's up there. You know, it's funny. Um, it's not really funny, but um, a few days ago, my my friend was was watching a an MLS match, um, and he sent me a picture, like, or uh, or he sent me a video clip of this um, NYFC goalkeeper that kind of came up his line to like stop a charging attacker, and they and they collided, and the guy's leg like snapped somewhere in the like middle, it's like kind of like oh, flopped in the yeah. slow motion. Yeah, it was bad. And the ambulance came on the field to like take him off, and I'm like, I don't know if I've seen the ambulance like come out onto the. We got to see the ambulance before, and then obviously as soon as that yeah. happens, and I told him that at the next Louisville City game that that happens, like the absolute worst case scenario for your knee because he. He went for that ball, was completely straight legged, collided with the keeper. His heel hit the ground, but his upper body was still moving forward, and all of the momentum of the keeper went onto his knee with his foot planted and his body moving the other way. Yeah, which is brutal. It's like the worst possible situation you could be in. Yeah. Um, now, um. I do know, Doug. We got we got feedback during while we were do, um, while I was doing the broadcast that um, Jorge did not end up going to the hospital. They had him in the locker room. Look at him. So was it urgent enough to to warrant that? I'm still so not optimistic about his long term. My only silver there. lining is he didn't seem like he was in a ton a ton of pain. I mean, he could just be like one of those people. He was not reacting like on his. It, on his face like it was like terrible terrible so hopefully i don't but, know the emotions i was reading was it was the look of a guy who knows the season just ended. yeah but it also he didn't look happy um it, the at the very least he severely hyperextended it which is like not a good thing even if that's all it was yeah um and i, I you know I don't think they probably knew anything after the match. I haven't got to listen to the post-match uh, comments yet. Uh, I have to circle back and do that. I'm sure um, Monday, Tuesday, they're going to have more thorough look at him. And um, 
maybe in the lead up to the to the next one we'll we'll get some more information about him but i'm not expecting anything anything good i'm 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 guessing like season injury I, I, you just don't want to rush back from anything. maybe he's like back in the mix late but for the most part is at least like, you have to imagine his regular season is probably close to done like that's pretty pretty rough like there's there could be a number of tears there Oof. not good but anyway, um, good luck to best best wishes to Jorge on a, on a speedy yeah, recovery. Obviously, from what, yeah, obviously the what the looked like a pretty bad, yeah, yeah. Obviously the the worst element of it, but otherwise, like I'm just I am so proud and so thrilled of how they responded after um in this one after what happened in the Rhode Island when they were they came out hungry, they you know they looked top notch. This team's like we knew this like this isn't going like what I'm about to say is not going to be shocking by by any regards like we're deep enough in the season we know this now but like this team is special and we need to make sure that we're we're paying a lot of attention and really appreciate what we're getting right now like this team is unreal it is kind of the culmination of coach danny cruz's heck head coaching career he's been building up to playing this style of soccer for a while now it's finally was able to assemble the right roster and this is the outcome of that and it's really cool to to kind of see this this full project come together and have as much success as it's had something i love four goals four goal scorers yeah let's yeah. see it share out uh not a one harris serrano and uh toa <laughs> harris he just he ta- he got it the ball that was already going into the goal he put a toe on hey you know what he's probably got a goal scoring uh bonus <laughs> like a contract true, somewhere. someone with a true head for the goal yeah you secure that bag kid i'm here for it <laughs> so yeah Harris. Well, I mean, like, uh, uh, to be fair, Gleedles was mostly Harris. Uh, Gleedle just had to sort of tap that home, too. Um, no, that's right. I'm also just love I'm, to see Gleedle score. Friend of the pod. I think we're both. He was oh. really fun to talk to. We're both I'm big, big fans. Gleedle guy. Yeah, he's good. He's a yeah. good dude. I love him. Uh, and Ray, I mean, like, uh, it's great. The, the season Ray is having is great. Because after he came and looked really good when he first got here. And then I think there was like a little bit of growing pains. He had a period there where he didn't look like he did when he first, for that first couple games. And he's really come on this season. One might say he's having a renaissance. Ray. Okay, sure. Yeah. So one could say that. I just, I just want to make that joke. Um, Tola got the score sheet too. Tola. After we said, uh, after, after we said last week that in, in, in his, you know, little bits of minutes he's gotten. He's been looking better and better. He, yeah. he got on the score score sheet this week. Yeah. A he, great goal, too. He yeah. put that thing right where it needed to be. Yeah. It was uh, between it was a two shot. defenders' legs, right right into the side net. But I mean, the, the cool thing is, it's like Birmingham is not a bad team. We have to go down to their house, which has just been like, we've gotten just had so, so like results down there. And it's tough. You know, you're playing on turf. Big, uh, the big, you know, it's a football pitch, you know, not your, na- your normal dimensions. And like, really, nothing stopped this team from, from executing there. And I imagine Coach Cruz has like things that he wants happen differently throughout it. But secretly in the back of his mind, he's like, man, that was, that was a great outing. He, I mean, he, he has to be very, very thrilled. I guarantee Cruz is probably mad about the one they gave up. And that's, oh, no, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and, that's the kind, like, and that's the kind of stuff that he has to like highlight with the team to keep up my like, grinding. But yeah. in his head, he's like, I really couldn't have asked for a lot more there. That's at least that was the recovery we needed after last week. Yeah. So, um, back on track. No, no skids happen in here with, uh, with, with Blue City. Great, uh, great win. Very, very happy about that one. Very happy. Man, that was a tale, a tale to have some the pod too, huh? Being very mad and very happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what well, we got? Uh, Roots, Roots, the next match for for Level City. Yeah, that was the uh, that was actually the most fun match from last season. A lot of spice, late last minute drama there. Their goalkeeper sucks. Is he still on their team? Was it like Blanchett or something like that? Uh, let's look. Let's look. Let's look at their roster. Uh, Oakland Roots. Yeah, he's still Bar. there. Oh, good. Let's. Uh, Paul Blanchett. <laughs> well, I'm not allowed to he shout at forty when I go down to take pictures, so I may have to. 
<laughs> May have to hold my tongue. If uh, I, mean, I, I know, at Oakland. I, I know we probably got some uh, some traveling plans. Fans I should have looked up if that sure was a home game or a road game. at them. It's um at Oakland. It's at Oakland. They, they oh, came here last it. year. Yeah. So um. Yeah, that I mean they're doing they're doing pretty good, so that'll be a a good test for the squad. But like, we're I mean we're those guys like we're gonna we're gonna win. It's just like what's the score gonna be? Are they still? Have they improved their situation as far as as far as field goes in Oakland? I haven't checked back in on that. Uh, I'm gonna assume no. They got their field banned for being too crappy. It was the it was the 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 traveling the magic traveling turf <laughs> made yeah. its way there. Yeah. Uh I think I think it's better, but still not good. If I remember last time I watched the game in Oakland, they have like it's turf, but they've they've painted it different shades of green to look like it's been mowed in alternating patterns, and it's like way too different of shades of green that they picked. So it's like very distracting. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna expect for it to uh be any good yeah not a great improvement in, in yeah. field quality from this last week but see, though i mean it'll be a long road trip oakland is doing pretty i'm um, pretty solid this season so it'll be a good test for louisville city but i'm not worried yeah maybe we can give it back to the bay area for for what just happened <laughs> we'll see so um oh yeah i guess on a, on a personal i got to call not just the Lou City match, but the racing one as well. I did the racing one at Lynn Family Stadium, hopped in my car, went to the ESPN studio, did nice. the Lou City one. I actually had a lot of fun. I didn't know how, um, if that was going to be like too much or whatnot, but it was a good time just running my mouth on the radio all day. I did my part to try to distract you with texts the whole time. So, <laughs> yeah, I was leaving when I sent you that that one meme. I don't want to be <laughs> around anymore. <laughs> Uh, that was that was the fun part about it, though. For you know, as, as, well, as frustrated as I was with the racing match, I did uh, enjoy. It's after, always cool doing them at the stadium. Hopefully, after this next racing game, we can share some of the fun. I think you should leave gifts rather than the sad. I think you should leave gifts. Yeah, there's a lot going. On. I actually, ended up that night watch um watching some more. I think you should leave. And after because I sent that meme, I'm like, I actually watched that episode. <laughs> I want to rewatch Detroiters. I think that's my that's one of my next things. It's good, it's good show. Yeah, I've seen it. I want to rewatch it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you have seen it, you said? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I saw it after. I think you should leave, so. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're obviously out of soccer content, though. So we better let these uh, fine people move on to the next one in their podcast feed. What is the schedule situation? Okay, race? Oh, okay, both teams are on this week. I was, th- I was thinking about racing's uh, Olympic break situation. Yeah, we had a game the on the 6th and the game on the 7th. So yeah. Perfect, so. Well then, we'll be back and liking this new cadence we're doing. I don't know how they uh, how you viewers are, are are feeling about it, but the games are more fresh in my mind. You know, yeah. personally, I think I'm doing uh, doing it this time for us is uh, a little more conducive to my schedule. I feel less stress and yeah. pressure. It'll be nice. So, anyway, thank you guys as always for tuning in. Check out the State of Louisville YouTube page so you can watch our faces, see my messy room. Will he clean it up next week? Help to probably not. Find out. Shut up! I have time off. I have time off coming up. So, what uh, will Zach's facial hair situation yeah. be next week? You got to tune are you in. Get, are you getting rid of the mustache? I don't know. People got to find out. I'm keeping mine. I'm like really into it. <laughs> Yours is just a beard now. No, it's I, I cut this low and I keep the mustache. It's like the fade, as I call it. I don't know. Wife doesn't <laughs> like it, but I thought it was going to be kind of just like a meme for the baseball game. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually digging it. So we're just going to ride this thing out. Yep, I'm stuck with it till my daughter says I can shave. So we'll see. The we'll see how long this goes. Four year old. Yeah. All right. We're logging off now. Take care, everybody. Bye, Bye y'all. Goodness.